Hi all, TFI here. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, over the past few weeks, I was exploring the topic of investing for capital gain or dividend. And in my last video, I was checking if we know the intent of our investment. Uh, answering those questions is important because then we'll use the correct measure and correct strategies. Um, but what is also as important is the execution itself. So I thought this week I will go back to the action part. So I'm going to check on whether my dividends are likely to sustain in the next few weeks. Yes. So the question is, are my dividends likely to sustain? So there are two keywords there, likely and sustain. So let's start with sustain. So sustain is about allowing something to continue for a period of time. So for the context of this sharing, um, when I talk about sustain is to compare to financial year 2022. And it's over the next few years, okay, it's hard for me to predict what's going to happen four, five, ten years later on. So when I talk about sustain, it's the next two to three years, maybe until financial year 2025 itself. Um, I need to continue means that it's same or increasing. I think we can accept that. But I also want to extend that a bit, that if it's dropped by less than 5%, or it's going to be temporary drop and it's likely to go back again, then that is sustained also. I think that's only fair. I mean, if we think about our own job itself, if your company is not doing well, you don't expect the same bonus every year. So I think that's reasonable. So if there's a drop uh, for one year, then you go back, then we can accept that that's sustained. Okay, next unlikely, which is defined as probably going to happen itself. So that is subjective because it's based on my judgment and my confidence level itself. What, what I'm confident about, you might not feel the same way. So I'm going to go back to my star system. So five stars for very confident. So this is a Pao Jia one. Okay, four stars for confident and three stars for somewhat confident. Uh, what about two stars and one stars? If there are two stars and one star, they, they should not appear in my portfolio. As you can see on the screen, there are 13 counters that generate income for me, um, seven REITs and six non-REITs itself. Um, in terms of position size itself, um, the REITs take out about 28.6%, the non-REIT 27.4%, so in total 55%. The other 45% belongs to growth counters. For today's video, I'm just going to talk about the REITs. This slide shows you my rating for all the seven counters. Um, in summary, there are two three stars, two four stars, and three five stars itself. So a reminder is compared to financial year 2022, uh, over the next few years and uh, as long as it drops less than five percent or i think it's temporary i will take that as sustain the two rich that receive a three star from me are daiwa house logistics trust and maple tree pan asia commercial trust basically um they do not have a track record daiwa house is just listed for less than one year um impact merge in less uh just slightly more than one year or so even though mct has been around for a long time the best way for me to think about it is that they are they are a new entity because the merger is huge um, I also can't compare directly with their financial year 2022 DPU because that one house consists of a 30 months period and for MPEG itself, there's a clean up dividend. So what I decided to do is I, I, I annualized their 2022 second half dividend. So for both of them will be 5.22 cents and 9.34 cents um, respectively. Um, so if I assume that there's a similar dividend for the second half, then the DPU for MPEG will be 6.7% lower than 9.34 cents. So that's something for me to look out. Having said that, MPEG still have their price asset. So I think I shared in my previous video, um, I'm going to take a look at this year, next year, and see how, how things are like for them. As for Daiwa House, um, the other, other metrics looks good itself. But like I said, they are very new. Let's, let's observe. The two risks that receive a four stars from me are Capital Land, um, Assetant Risk, and Maple Tree Industrial uh, Trust itself. Um, both have proven track record with established CEO. Uh, Capital Land seems to rotate their CEO a bit more often, so I think the current CEO is with them for five to six years. Whereas for Maple Tree Industrial Trust, um, the CEO has been there for them for for I think more than ten years. So with, with that, uh, I'm very confident of the the leaders and their track record. Um, having said that, there are some headwind. So for the Capital Land um accident rate itself, the DPU has not recovered to pre COVID level. So if you track back all the way to the to the beginning. They keep on having their increasing DPU, then there might be a sudden drop one of the year. And that has happened. Uh, but past three years seems to be good. Uh, as for uh, Maple Tree Industrial Trust, their, their increase was quite impe impeccable uh, until last year. So that they have the first drop of DPU last year. And, and we can see that even this year itself, they are going to face another drop. For their latest result, both risks um, uh, have a slight drop in their DPU itself. A sudden risk, a drop in 2% and Maple Tree Industrial Trust, a, a drop of 2.9%. Um, the positive are both the occupancy and the reversion still looks good. But the uncertainty in macro condition, 
uh, might cause further impacts in the coming quarters. Hence, I decided to give them, give both of them a four stars. Now for the Pautia, the five stars read itself. So um, we have FCT, Maple Tree Logistics, and Parkway Life. Um, so they have proven track record with established CEO. So I'm very confident of the leadership itself. So if you look at the number itself, they speak for themselves. Even this year, both, all the three of them reported good numbers, um, despite the headwind itself. Um, though they do it, they did it differently. For FCT itself, they have um, very good metrics um, in terms of um, uh, stronger footfall and positive rental reversion. So they are, they are most near the MRT station. Really, is a very strong um, mode for them itself. Um, as for Maple Tree Logistics itself, I think the active management of their properties, uh, including the divestment, helps them. As for Parkway Life, um, they have very favorable rental structure with the sponsor. And the preemptive move in their the hatching itself produce a uh, very uh, high certainty in the DPU for the next few years. Uh, to sum up, despite the current pressure, I think the dividends from the risk in my portfolio is likely to sustain for the next few years itself. Uh, it never feel good to have capital loss even though they are unrealized. Um, but again, it, it doesn't really matter for this group of uh, counters because they are meant to generate income for me. Also, um, this the loss itself is mitigated by capital gain from my other counters. That's it for this video. Um, next up will be on my non read income counters. Are the dividends from then going to be sustained for the next few years? Um, do subscribe so that you'll be notified when part two is um, uploaded on, onto YouTube. See you.